What's going on everyone? It is Will Mitchell here. Today, I wanna to talk to you about rental data, some new data that we've just pulled, and give you a little bit of an overview of what's going on in the rental market. We have so many people that are looking to invest, do an Airbnb, you know, invest in a hotel project, do a boutique resort, whatever the case may be. So we pulled some data from the internet and some of our sources online and basically have compiled it for you guys. So some of the stuff we're gonna talk about today and we'll just kind of dive into it is the rental inventory breakdown based on bedroom count. We've talked about this in our past videos. We wanna give you an up-to-date uh, scope of that as of April 26th, as of today. So as of right now, the standard or the breakdown here for bedroom count studios are 6% of the rental inventory. One bedroom are 48%, so almost half of the rental inventory is one bedroom. Two bedroom is 26% of the rental inventory uh, on Airbnb. Three bedroom is 13% of the rental inventory. Four bedroom is 4% and five plus is 3%. So, you know, from we came out with our initial analysis on this, not a ton has changed. One of the more interesting stats that we found looking over the data was the inventory growth on Airbnb. Now, the last time we discussed this, uh, and this is for Q1, was around that time. And you would anticipate that over the course of this year, when so many new things are being built and brought into the market, we would have seen a tremendous increase in growth in the rental inventory on Airbnb. Actually, there was a 1% decrease in inventory for Q1 of 2022. I don't know why that is. Uh, my guess would be that a lot of the stuff that is being developed that our team has helped facilitate is not completed yet. A lot of the stuff that's being built in response to you know the demand isn't being isn't completed yet. It's under construction right now. So a negative one percent growth on rental inventory, but I would anticipate in the coming year or two years that's going to increase substantially. We'll keep you up to date on that data. Next up, let's talk about what amenities people are searching for in a home on Airbnb. So we've got a graph here that we'll put up. Approximately 90% of people searching are looking for AC. If you're anything like me, I mean, the AC is off right now, so our audio comes out a little clearer, but I love my AC. Heating. Not a lot of people are looking for heating in Belize. I mean, I'm actually amazed to see that about 7% of people are looking for heating. I think they're clicking the button by accident because that makes no sense. It's always beautiful out here. A washer, approximately 50% of people are looking for a washer. Uh, a little bit less are looking for a dryer, I guess. People don't mind drying their clothes outside, hanging them up. About 40% are looking for a dryer. 80% of people are looking for a kitchen, which is pretty standard in an Airbnb. Again, 80% are looking for parking, which is really important. When you're on the island, you need a place to keep your cart. If you're renting a cart, or maybe you're just gonna bike around, but I guess 80% of people are looking for parking. Internet. Actually more important than air conditioning is internet. 97% of people searching on Airbnb are looking for internet. So internet has really become a necessity, guys. You need that if you're doing an Airbnb. Cable TV is down to about 40% and probably steadily declining. Most people nowadays will just use Netflix or you know whatever the case may be. And 50% of people are looking for a pool. So if you have a private pool on the property, that's a great asset. 1% of people are looking for a hot tub. And if you ask me, I'm in that 1%. So next up, we have some COVID recovery data. We use a metric here, or the, the data we source uses a metric here called RevPAR. That's revenue per available room. Basically, you take the occupancy rate, usually of a hotel, and you multiply that by the nightly rental rate or daily rental rate. So I'm pulling this up here so we can get it clearer. So, when you look at this chart here, you'll obviously see that 2020 rev par was way down. Many of you can guess why that was. I'll give you one hint. It was COVID. And then as you move into 2021, you'll see pretty much it was getting back close to around the 1 to 2K. Uh, in some cases, early 2020, it was hitting 3K. That was happening in 2019, early 2020. And now what you'll see going into 2022 is we've essentially recovered and actually exceeded what we saw in 2020 right before COVID. So from a COVID recovery standpoint, the rental market has done phenomenal. The island has been literally buzzing. There's been so many times when I've gone to the airport here on the island and there's a line exiting Tropic Air, which I've never seen that before. 
it's amazing. So it looks like the airports are gonna have to scale up and everything is growing and expanding, which is amazing to see. And I'm just shocked to see the, the COVID recovery data and see that we're exceeding where we were ahead of COVID. That's a great indicator that we've really been waiting to find and it came much earlier than expected. Occupancy, so Ambergris Key Airbnb occupancy for 2022 is 69%. We have a little graph here to go over what that looks like. Next up, let's get into the average daily room rate. This is a blanket for good, bad, ugly studio, seven bedroom, two bedroom, doesn't matter. This is everything in the market. It's 185 US a night, which even if you take that number and you contrast it to other locations, a lot of travelers come here and they're surprised at how much the nightly rate is. And it really is a market where we don't have a tremendous amount of inventory on the market. So we do garner a higher rate, especially when you see the recovery numbers like they're at right now, surging above what they were pre-COVID. Uh, so that's pretty much how you come to that number. We have a breakdown here of the range of what it looks like. So you can see the low to high, and that's broken down based on a, a monthly basis. So this is a really great indicator to show you guys what the high seasons are, what the slow seasons are, and really give you a good idea of what the nightly rental rate would be. And as we get into the end of this here, we're gonna talk about some actual units in the market. So the next graph we have breaks down income or average nightly rate based on bedroom count. So you can see orange is at the bottom, light blue, and I guess dark blue, and then green at the top. So we have a little legend here. Orange is one bedroom with an average of 97 to 157 per night. Light blue is two bedroom, 165 to 287 per night. Dark blue is a three bedroom at 263 to 611 per night. And four bedroom is 405 to 745 per night. Once you hit five bedroom or above, it exceeds much higher than that. What we found in the market, as you guys saw in the initial data, there's not a ton of inventory available in that realm of property, high end, multiple rooms. So it really can go up at that point because there's low competition and a good amount of demand for that. But what you'll notice again is a lot of the numbers we extrapolated about a year ago, talking about bedroom count still hold true based on current market data. And same is reflected in the monthly revenue chart here, which we have that I will pull up right now. And essentially the same thing is mirrored in the monthly revenue graph. So what you'll see is the four or five bedrooms are generating 2,700 to 15,200 a month, three bedroom generating 1,000 to 8,000 a month, two bedroom generating 587 to 8,000 per month, and a one bedroom 394 to 1,900 per month. So if you're looking at a one bedroom condo on the beach, I would say from an investment standpoint, it literally just doesn't make sense. The thing that makes sense in the market right now is multiple rooms, freestanding homes, and entering that higher end of the market, you're really gonna be in a, a great position there and adding in amenities. Even if you have a two bedroom and you have your own pool on a freestanding lot, that's gonna separate you from everything else on the island that's just a condo. So it's really about positioning yourself within your property as well to get to the higher end of the data. Right here, we have the top eight performing rental properties, which I'll just pop up for you guys to see and you can get an idea of the ADR, the revenue, what the homes look like. I also encourage you to go do your own digging around Airbnb. So next up, we have a number of different Airbnb rentals and this is more just links with their earnings. So if you look at the four bedroom with a private pool, it's 648 per night and is fully booked until October, 2022. The three bedroom with a private pool is 548 per night, fully booked till October, 2022. The three bedroom wheelhouse in Mahogany Bay is renting for 486 a night, 587 a night, December till March. So it's uh, adjusted for the seasons. And November it became available for rentals and it's fully booked in December and numerous bookings in January and February. Since it started, it's running 65% occupancy. So there's a specific example within Mahogany Bay year one on airbnb coming out of the gate at 65 percent these are the numbers that you want to see when you're looking at an airbnb project the three bedroom with a rooftop pool 262 a night which we just discussed two bed with a bunk room private pool 
389 a night at 80 percent occupancy so we have a number of links here if you guys want to get our data uh, analysis in an email shoot us an email we can happily get that over to you guys now let's move into a couple more homes the first one is the jib that's a two bed two bath plus two lofts the jib for 2020 earned 40,722 with an adr of 279 per night the three bedroom house with a rooftop pool for 2021 from january to september because they took that off after that earned 69,000 with an adr of 355 and we have a few other homes if you guys want to get some more data shoot us an email and we're happy to give you guys some more info into some homes that are you know renting right now in 2022 and how they're performing but that was just a little breakdown of the rental market for you guys we want to get you the data we want to break down how the market looks right now as always we can't wait to see you down here in paradise and we're looking forward to it guys everyone have a great day